Well, I am back. So it's been two and a half weeks, I think, since Iron Man, Wisconsin. And I just basically took some time off and I've been working out. I took a whole week off, did absolutely nothing. It was miraculous, it felt amazing. But then I got really bored and I wanted to start working out again. After the Iron Man, um, I, I wasn't as sore. It was probably my best conditioning I was. Worst time overall, but I think my conditioning was the best because I recovered very, very quickly. Like that night I was able to like bend over and start packing to head home where normally I'm like, mm -mm, not gonna happen, I can't do anything. So I was actually able to pack, which I think helped a little bit to keep moving. But the top of my right foot was purple and it bothered me the whole run to the point that I was like, either I have a stress fracture or I just broke something. So I was really, really nervous. I woke up the next morning and it was, it was almost like a red, like a bright red color and the purple had gone away. So I was like, okay, well, this is odd. So I was able to walk on it without pain. Um, so I basically just took like the last two and a half, almost three weeks and I haven't ran. I've done elliptical, I've done cycling, um, I've done weights, I've done other things other than running just to basically give my foot a break in case something did happen and it was a small stress fracture or you know, I had some sort of ligament damage or something from the race. So hopefully, the last three weeks have been good. I have my running shoes on. So these are the running shoes I wore in Ironman, Wisconsin, and I'm just hopeful that all the time that I basically rested my body, that I'm good to go. Because I've been doing other exercises and haven't felt any pain with cycling and working out. So I feel like I'm recovered and I can try my foot. So it made me really, really nervous after the race. And I was gonna go to urgent care and get it x-rayed. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna give it some time. And yeah, like I said, it was purple one day, it was red the next day, and the next day it was almost this like really, really pale yellow. And the fourth day, all the discoloration was gone and there was no pain. So I don't know if it was a small damage or it was the shoe was too tight. I mean, I know I had pain. Like I had to stop three times on the course to like readjust my shoe and retie them because it was just a painful feeling on the top of my foot. So I'm gonna go for a run probably four or five miles, depending upon, you know, if I feel pain, obviously it's gonna be much shorter. If I'm not feeling pain, I'll just do four or five. Um, it's still hot. It's October in just a couple days and it's like 80 degrees today. It's supposed to be like 87. So it's really odd to be this warm, but I'm going to take it because that means we're getting that much closer to winter being over. <laughs> we'll just blink and winter be over, but everything's been going well and I will catch up with you guys when I get back and we'll see how this run goes for me. I am back from my run and holy moly, I don't know what it is. It was so hard. I mean, we have like 30 mile an hour winds, so that doesn't help, but my watch, my Garmin was like a negative two. So obviously I'm not only stagnant, I was decreasing performance improvement, which was weird because I had two miles that were like faster there than the week before Ironman. So, <laughs> but then I slowly deteriorated. I don't know, my legs got tight and stiff and just, I was breathing heavier. I could tell my heart rate was increased. So it's amazing. I take two weeks and five days to just kind of relax, let the body recuperate mentally and physically. And my body's like, yeah, let's just put her back into the out of shape mode. So <laughs> I'm out of shape according to Garmin. Um, but now I've just got to go get some errands done. Um, I need to foam roll later today. That's really important. I've, I've got to be better about taking care of everything, especially with Dopey coming up. It's, I think, like 100 days away. I can't believe it. <sighs> I just said that, like, I can't believe the Ironman was, Wisconsin was getting so close. And then here I am, I turn around and I have like three and a half months till Dopey. But yeah, I'm just gonna go get the grass cut, do some yard work, get groceries, run errands, pay bills, you know, life stuff. So <laughs> I'll check in with you guys later. Well, it is six o'clock in the evening and it has been storming for like a day and a half and it is pitch black out. I'm, okay, not pitch black, but it's really dark out. It is just storming, I have the window open, but yeah, it's just been storming all day and we're flooding and it makes my kids very bored. They're totally bored. So my husband had to go to work. He had to run and go. So I've been trying to get him to go run. And he's always like, no, I don't want to. I want to take a nap. I don't want to do anything. The well, last time we ran a race together was in 2006. So I took it upon myself to just take care of it because every time I'm like, hey, I'm gonna wake up early. I'm gonna work out. Why don't you come down to the basement with me? He won't, or I'll say, hey, I'm home. You can go for a run. He won't. So 
kind of did something. So I saw this race, it's called the Hot Chocolate, like 5K and 15K. And there's one in Kansas City and it's in November. And you know, just being me, I was like, well, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do the 15K. So I just signed him up for the 15K, which actually, if you look at it, they actually have some pretty cool stuff. It's in 48 days and he hasn't ran at all, but you get like a jacket for swag, you get this uh, medal, and then like at the end, you get this like whole bowl of food. It's actually pretty cool. So it looks like a pretty decent race and I looked online and had good reviews. So, and it's local, so obviously we don't have to go like far for it, but that's what I signed him up for. I now have that race in November and then I'll have Dopey. So like I said, it'll be more of just like a training run because we had to submit proofs of time for our corral placement, but he hasn't ran a race since 2006. So I don't think he'll have like the ability to be in that corral. So I just figure we'll just seat ourselves where we need to be and we'll just have fun with it and just go do a race together. So fingers crossed I can get my parents to watch the kids too. <laughs> I just had to do it. I just had to do it. He just does not want to work out. He just doesn't want to do it. So I actually told him what I was thinking about doing. He's like, oh honey, I need a lot more time. I was like, honey, you already can like four or five miles. He actually ran like three weeks ago and he ran like five miles. And he's like, yeah, I feel really good. He's like a freak of nature. So he can look at a book and literally remember anything that he looked at. He can go for a five mile run and he hasn't ran in two years. And be like, yeah, it was totally good. It was great. I actually PR'd. He's a freak of nature. So he'll probably train for maybe two weeks and he'll probably beat my best time ever. So I kind of hate him secretly for that. But So we have the hot chocolate 15K in November and my husband's gonna find out when he gets home that he is signed up. Good morning. So it is Monday morning and it is almost October. I worked yesterday and I didn't get a workout in. I swear the last four weeks, which basically after an Ironman, I just kind of say the last, like those four weeks after an Ironman, I can basically do whatever I want. So basically I've been training and training and training and training so long, so hard, so many months. And then this month is just the time to like rest and recoup. I have like a Haglund's on my ankle that hurts and it's been there for 10 years. Sometimes it flares up, sometimes it doesn't. And my foot's been bothering me a little bit. I kind of talked to you guys about that. So I've just had some kind of like little nagging injuries. And with Dopey coming up and then I also have that 15K, I'm just like, you know what? If I don't want to work out, I don't work out. So with it being 87 degrees again today and we're in October tomorrow, I'm going to go out for a bike ride and it is no distance, no time. Just go whenever you feel. So it'll probably end up being two hours because I usually go like an hour out and I'm like, okay, I'll come back. So that's the plan. My kids are in school. I don't have work. So I am literally just going to go ride my bike and have fun with it. Um, they have gymnastics later today, so I have to get them ready for that after school. Um, but other than that, there's not much going on. It's just so nice to go out like and train and I feel like I have injuries that are trying to come up but I'm telling it no so I'm trying to rest cross training is so good um, like Heather Jurgensen she's been talking a lot about like cross training for her goofy challenge coming up and with dopey coming up as well both are just they take a lot of time and you need a lot of running to make it successful but I know my body 
will break at a certain point if I run too much. I can literally only run about three times a week. So in order to do something like a dopey or a goofy or, you know, marathon challenge, whatever it may be, I have to find other ways to train. And cycling is great for me. I hate swimming, but it's another great thing that I can do to cross train, to still get that cardio in, to still build up my muscles, to still kind of play out what like a long day of dopey is going to be. So, I mean, it's going to be a long week with dopey, but cross training really, really helps. And it's a way for me to knock on wood <laughs> to prevent injuries, but I could still stay fit and active and still keep my body moving. So cycling takes longer. Yes, it does. It takes, I mean, it does take more money. You have to have a lot of cycling equipment, um, but easily you can go to a gym or just ride a bicycle around the neighborhood and it helps so much, especially for these challenges that are requiring so much running to get to the starting line. So fingers crossed that nothing else like kind of looms around. It's still kind of there, but again, I'm just letting it rest, taking some ibuprofen, icing it, and then doing a lot of cross training. I'm only running about two days a week right now, you know, cause I'm, I'm three weeks out post Ironman. So I still should technically be resting just low volume for the next week. So that's my plan for another week, just low volume, and then it will be full dopey. planning on doing like five and a half or six but it ended up just being a little bit longer I'm rolling out my legs because my calf is really mad at me <laughs> and I'm not sure why and it always seems to help to roll it out but it's like crunchy when I roll like the side of my ankle so or the side of like my lower leg basically but it makes me a little bit nervous um, it's not enough that I would warrant like hey I need to go to the doctor and get it checked out but it's enough that I need to pay attention to it and probably cross train so only running like twice a week but there'll be a point in time where I have to make the decision of do you go see a doctor keep training through it because I have to increase my training and my mileage for dopey so I'm just hoping like over the next few probably next two weeks 10 to 14 days that I can figure out what's going on or the pain will decrease enough that I can just proceed with like full-on training or I'm gonna need to make a doctor's visit and I hate doctor visits because they always tell you what you don't want to hear like stop running <laughs> Just let it rest for six weeks. I don't have six weeks. So I'm going to continue rolling and then get cleaned up and then hopefully everything feels better with some ibuprofen, some more rest and icing, which I have my ice pack as well. Well guys, I just got back from a swim and I'm going to be swimming a lot more than I have been. Um, so I was having foot pain, kind of ankle pain. Um, I just wasn't feeling right and I went for my second run since Ironman so three weeks ago actually four now almost and um, it just didn't feel good it ached all night long I was like something's not right it ached the next day give it another day and I was finally like okay I need to go see an orthopedist something's going on in my foot slash ankle so I went and saw the doctor and um, I got in pretty quickly and they said that I have a stress reaction in my fibula, my distal fibula. So when I look at the x-ray, I don't see anything. I don't know what they're talking about. He said there's no actual fracture line through the bone, but you're at like the beginning stages of getting a stress fracture in your, in your fibula, which is your lower leg bone. So that puts a damper in things. Um, it was a really quick appointment when I thought was actually one of the worst doctor appointments I've ever had because... He was just like, oh yeah, you're good. You know, you got a stress reaction in your fibula. Just take like three weeks off of running. You should be good to go. If you still have pain, come back and we'll look at it again. And the pain, I'll show you guys. The pain that I'm having is like down in here, but the fracture is like up in here. So I get it. Pain can radiate, but it just seems really weird. So it's a bummer. I have basically the beginnings of a stress fracture. I'm glad I caught it now instead of 
basically I would have been probably running for another month with Dopey and probably made it worse. And then it would have been six to eight weeks in a boot. So he didn't want to put me in a boot, so I'm just wearing a brace, just kinda, it actually feels good to have, it actually feels good to just kinda have like some compression against it, so. That is the story. I'm out of running for three weeks, so I'm gonna be swimming and cycling. Um, he said just non-weight bearing activity for like exercise, so I'm assuming that cycling and maybe even elliptical, but um, I haven't ran for four days, so does that already count into the three weeks? <laughs> So I only really have two and a half weeks left. Um, so I'm just kind of nervous that maybe there's something else going on with like a tendon or ligament that we can't see with like an MRI. So I'm just hoping that like all the pain will subside in the next three weeks and I can start running again and it won't be that big of a deal. But I'm out of running for three weeks, so it stinks. But in other ways, I'm like, I'll get really good at swimming. I'm gonna get really, really strong in my upper body. Um, it's really good cardiovascular workout. I went today. To like 3,000 meters and I mean I, I pushed it today because I finally had like energy I wasn't tired from workouts previous um, and then yeah I'll really just spend some time down on the bike which honestly like two and a half three weeks is gonna fly by so I just like I said I hope it, that's what it needs it's just that two and a half three weeks and then I can jump back into training because it'll be around like the 20th 25th when I can start running again and I really need to start running again to get to this dopey 2020 so Fingers crossed, it's just a stress reaction and we can get running again and training. Well, good morning guys. You know what this means when you see my uh, white wall, basement wall. <laughs> it's time for a basement workout. So I was getting ready to start my ride because obviously I've got a ride because of my leg um i don't know if you can see it holy moly i whacked my head like i was bending over and i whacked it on this and i just went wham and all of a sudden i was just like ow like is this what it feels like to be punched i literally and it's just it's super hard thank god it's not pointier i would have had like a cut but that's a good way to start a workout holy moly beat me up i haven't even started but my head is throbbing right now, so it feels fantastic. Ow. ow, 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 ow. But yeah, so I'm gonna get a spinner roll workout in. I'm just gonna do something real quick, about an hour, and get this ride in. I'm just, I'm like counting down the days. I'm like about a week in, so I wanna give it two more weeks, which is my next doctor appointment to kinda see if everything was okay. Um, but Hopefully this all works, just taking you know three weeks off and my leg will be good. And I guess the good thing is I can still cycle. It's not like I'm in a cast or a boot where I can't do anything and I have to go to the pool every time. So at least I can still cycle. But let's get this workout going. So I am just gonna head on downstairs and again do another cycling and I know that's not fun to watch So I'm gonna go get that workout in my foot's feeling good I was I had like a 14-hour shift yesterday, and it was pretty sore like at the end of the day But I don't think there's any day that my leg would have felt good after 14 hours So I feel like it's healing so that's good um, And I did way before I actually found out that I hurt myself I got these sketchers and they look like a Clifton 3 they're called Skechers Max Ultimate, I think, and they have like eight or eight to ten different variations of it, but it's this like super cushioned Skecher, which if you look at it, they look just like a Clifton, like a Clifton 3, and like when I feel them, they feel more dense than like the Clifton 6s and the Bondi 6 that I reviewed and everything, but obviously I can't run in them, but I can go downstairs and at least work out, do elliptical, stepper, stuff like that. And I'm gonna give them a whirl and see how they feel, but they look very similar and they're only $89 and I got 25% off that. So like shipping and everything, I think they were like $61 or something. So way cheaper than a Hoka, you know, clocking at like 110, 130, somewhere around there. So if those are awesome and they work really well, that'll be so nice because it'll be like a fraction of the price. 
and I go through shoes a lot. So especially with having injuries in my foot and ankle and now another one, definitely want to keep up on making sure that my shoes are good to go. So I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna cycle, I'm gonna do a little bit of elliptical, so about an hour, and then I have to go into work for just about an hour, um, just like a meeting, basically. Um, got some new equipment, and they need to check us off on it, check that box, so that's the plans today. It is like super dark and cloudy, I would love to go outside and cycle, but it's just, it's we're supposed to get a cold front, like I think Western Kansas is gonna get snow this weekend, and I know we're getting really cold rain. We're gonna get a freeze or a frost around 32, 33. So I'll show you guys, but it's just an icky, dreary day. So I keep talking about like what Ironmans I wanna do next year. Obviously I'm already signed up for Ironman Tulsa 2020. Um, and I do kind of like the early season ones because it, it forces me to really keep a good workout plan during the winter time, which is good. But I'm like, so what am I gonna do all summer? I don't have like a training plan. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll do a lot of local races instead. Haven't decided, but I've always said that I wanted to do Ironman Louisville, but it's in October. So it's gonna be this weekend. And I'm like, I can't even imagine doing an Ironman. Like literally we're gonna be 33 degrees in about 36 hours. And the race is this weekend in Louisville. And their low that morning is supposed to be 41 and their highest was supposed to be, I think, 67 with sun, which is very similar to what Wisconsin was. We were, I think, 51 in the morning and then 60s for a high and we had no sun. So it'd be very similar temperature wise, I would think, except we were kind of human in Wisconsin. But I'm just like, I can't imagine a race that late. You know I mean? I know that's when Kona is and everything, but it just seems so late, but. Let's go get this workout in. So I'm making a crock pot recipe. It is pot roast and then potatoes and carrots. And then I have an onion on the bottom. Just gonna let that sit all day. I've got it on high for six hours. And then we actually had these. I'm actually gonna throw them out. I had these from like Costco. And so like this is their rotisserie chicken and they just kind of like season it up. Salsa and then a cilantro kind of sour cream sauce, lime, cheese, and then tortillas. And it was fairly good, but honestly I wasn't too impressed with it. Um, I've heard like raving reviews about Costco's chicken, but it was $16, I think, for this, which honestly, I, I prefer the HelloFresh meals. I, I don't get obviously this much. We've already eaten one round, but the HelloFresh meals were just better. Kona's on. I just turned on the TV and my dad's like, I'm watching Kona. I'm like, how are you watching Kona? It's usually like a month and a half later that you get to watch we're Kona. We're going to the Disney store. And we're going to go to the Disney store. <laughs> there is a Disney kind of games and crafting time later on this afternoon. So I signed him up. You have to RSVP to go to it, which is odd. It's at the mall. And um, so they're going to go. I get your juice open. Hold on. So they're gonna go to the Disney store and they get to wear their Halloween costumes and do Halloween games and crafts. So we're gonna go do that later, but I'm watching Kona while I unpack all the groceries. We have a wedding next weekend, so I went and got a gift, which is like a battery operated salt and pepper shaker. Who doesn't want that, right? <laughs> so, um, I got that and then I just got, I went to Sam's Club, so it's like a big box store and then some sushi. I got some Iron Man Kona and some sushi, and I've already gotten yelled at by my son today because he said, why are we not going to Kona? Because I was explaining to him last night, and I was like, well, honey, mommy has to qualify or get legacy, so I need four more Iron Mans to get there, or be top three in my age group. And he's like, so disappointed in me. He's like, I want a snow cone. <laughs> okay, I can get you a snow cone, but I'll work on the Kona part, so. All right, let's go watch some Kona. 